Hello everybody, my name is Leo and in this video we will share a demo review of the new Hughes and Kettner Ampman. First of all, we will hear the unit in action with the demo song, then I will describe the main characteristics of the unit, then we will hear more sounds in the dedicated section of this video, and finally I will give you my two cents. So I hope you enjoy and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell, as it would really help me to make more videos like this. Let's start with the demo song. Now let's describe the unit. It has two analog channels with fully independent controls that are volume, sagging, presence, resonance, tone and gain. Where the sagging control lets you dial the power amp saturation at any volume. That in theory should provide you with a more compressed tone and a more, how to say, touch sensitive Amp. Obviously, the gain knob determines the preamp saturation level. The tone shapes the channel's characteristic frequency range. The resonance knob, turned counterclockwise, gives to the cabinet's resonance a looser, softer sound for our clean tone. Turning the knob clockwise intensifies resonance for a tighter low end and works better with distorted sounds. The present knob controls the amount of harmonic overtones generated by the amp, so I would say that the knobs are not the standard EQ and gains that we are used to use in normal amp, but this unit offers an interesting configuration of knobs. Then we have the master control for the overall volume of both the channels and the solo knob that lets you bump up the volume beyond the master level. Its control range is 0 to plus 6 dB, giving a gain boost so you can simply step on the solo button to get that extra volume to let the lead line stand out. With the FX loop foot switch you activate or deactivate the FL loop. This boost switch brings up specific frequencies to deliver creamier or more assertive sounds depending on the channel. The lead above the boost button lights up red when you engage it. Let's now look at the back of the unit. We have the guitar input, then the noise gate, the input and output for the mono FX loop, a section dedicated to the red box, which is basically a speaker simulator. You can switch on and off the speaker simulation in order to use the eight cabinet simulations inside the ampment, or to use your own IR in your digital audio workstation if you switch it off. You can also assign different speaker simulation to each of the two channels, which is a pretty cool feature. Then we have a switcher to select mic or line output. Jux and Kettner recommends using the line setting when running long cables to send the signal over greater distances, for example at jigs. Here we have to pay attention as some recording interfaces comes with special IZ inputs. These high impedance jacks are designed for instrument level and are intended exclusively to, for connecting guitars. And we should not connect the red box to this type of input, as its higher output level will saturate and cause undesirable distortion. Then we have the headphone out and the relevant volume, an aux in 
the power switch and the AES switcher to be used in order to enable or disable the auto shutdown feature of the Ampman. Then we have the output speaker that can drive 4 to 16 ohm speakers. The wattages are 13 watts for 15 ohm speakers, 25 for 8 ohms and almost 50 watts for 4 ohm speakers. Let's now hear some more sounds. Final considerations here, and please notice that these are gonna be my personal opinions and you may not agree with me, and this is totally fine. First of all, I think it is a pretty clever solution, as basically you have a full two-channel sump in a very small format. It is not unique, as there are other similar products like the Taurus Amp, but the Amp Man is also pretty cheap at 350 bucks and still offer a pretty good sound. Let me now summarize the pros. Well, first of all, the format. It's a very small and light and compact, and that format allows us to build a pretty compact but powerful pedal board around it. It is also pretty flexible, as you can use it as a normal amp in a cab, or you can use it for recording easily using the red box out where in the red box out you can decide to use your own IR in your digital audio workstation or to use the cabinets included in the Ampman. Another pro is that the sound is pretty tweakable, thanks to the SAG, the gain knob and the solo and boost of foot switches. Another aspect to take into consideration is that it can drive real cabinet in a very small format. So it is different, for instance, from a Victory V4 that is only a preamp and it does not have a power amp output. And on the other hand, this is in line with other solutions like the Orange Terror Stamp or, as I was saying previously, the Taurus pedals. I would also add the clean sound to the Pro, as I like it, where, well, the overdriven channel is good, but uh, I would say nothing special. As regards the cons, it has not an input to attach it to an external switcher in order to control the Ampman together with your other pedals, and this is a kind of a bummer. It has not the possibility to load your own IR inside it, unfortunately. It requires a lot of power, so it's, I think, impossible to use it with the power brick of your pedals. All in all, I think it is a pretty compelling solution dedicated to the guitarists who want to build a small pedal board without the hassle to bring with them a real amp, with the possibility to use a real cabinet or to go straight into a mixer. In terms of sounds, I like the clean channel, where the distorted one is not exactly what I like the most. Summarizing, I would say that all in all, it is a pretty cool product. So we have now reached the end of this video, hope you enjoyed and if you did it, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell and give a thumbs up, it will be a great help. If you're interested in my IRs or my camper profiles, you can check out the link in the card above or description below, where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video, bye bye.